Can you go to prison because of a debt? Can you file for estafa against a person or corporation that did not return your investment? Welcome to the seventh episode of The Pivot and today is extra special because we are joined by my partner in crime, my partner in law, um, the, the Santos in the Pinol Santos and Associates, Attorney Henry. Welcome to the show. Hi Bernice, hi James. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hello everyone, you're watching The Pivot, your legal guide to startups, business innovation, and the online world. I'm James Deacon. And I'm attorney Bernice Pignol. And thank you again for joining us this week. For this episode, you will answer questions like, Pwede ba akong makulong dahil sa aking utang? And you know, similar questions like that. And today we're joined by my law firm partner, Attorney Henry. And he has been in the financing industry for the past decade. So he will help answer these questions and more. Well, welcome firstly to the show, uh, Henry. Glad to have you here. Just start Thanks. by what you were before you became a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was able to work with the various financial industries like insurance companies, lending mm -hmm. co corporations, and um, the last job I had was asset management, where mm -hmm. we, you know, I had I had the target of. 100 evictions a month. Oh gosh. Yeah. So you're that December. lawyer who calls you like, help your <laughs> being evicted. Puso lawyer. Yeah, oh. Yeah, wala ako dito. Don't answer the phone. Yeah, that's Nasa kotse ako while doing the eviction. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, sure you've got some horror stories to tell. So you've had like a lot of like experience with loans and yes. you know, so people getting yeah. drowned so people, by loans. To get debt. to the main question of the show, mm. do people really go to jail for their debt? Not really. It de really depends on how the debt was incurred mm. and uh, d depending on the circumstances. Mm. Okay, mm. so it's not an automatic, but yes. is it safe to say if there was a staff involved or fraud involved? Yeah, when, when fraud is involved, staff is automatic. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the question here I actually goes back to the Constitution, right? The yeah. Philipp the 1987 Philippine Constitution, because it says there you can't go to jail because of indebtedness, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a qualified no or yes, right? It has to be depending on the circumstances. Yeah, that, so, for example, um, let's say a loan for um, a credit card. Let's say, no. Or no, ako utang ako kay James, magkano pa pwede? 100,000? Nagpaparinig ka ba? Oo, actually, kailangan ko. So, 100,000 pesos, right? And then, I was supposed to pay it like two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. And then, nag three months na lang, I haven't paid James pa. Can he report me to the police station and have me arrested? I think no. that's what people know. Okay, so the answer is Generally, no. it's no. Can yeah. I seize her assets? It depends. If, oh. if the utang is, uh, has a security, mortgage. Mm. like mortgage, like a car, or, mm -hmm. okay. then you can get into, you can get the, the car or the, the property. I think here, you know, um, in this kind of question, you don't really automatically go to jail. Mm -hmm. And there has to be like some sort of deception, di ba? So generally, in the situation of James and I, just utang lang talaga, wala akong bad faith. I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, deceive James. It's just utang. So no, you cannot go to jail for that one, right, Attorney Henry? That's right, that's right. Yeah, because it's just, uh, it's just All a All right, debt. if you so, can't go to jail, yeah. what's the worst case scenario? Realistic world, mm -hmm. worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario is the... They file a case against you, a collection mm -hmm. case. A civil mm -hmm. case, yeah, that's a civil criminal case. Case. And when you file a civil case against a person to collect on a debt, they incur more expenses, they incur mm -hmm. my yes. legal costs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the, you can have it reimbursed. Uh, the court will specifically order a for, for the defendant. Attorney's to, fees. Attorney's that, fees, that, yeah. fees and the cost of litigation. Yes. And, and realistically, how long does that take? Because I know it sounds like a remedy, but yeah, in yeah. reality, it's like, ah, I mean, I mm -hmm. always hear this, 10 years yan or yes, five yes. years yan. I mean, yeah. reality, how quick are the, is the system to... Well, pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's that and yeah. qualification. The fastest is uh, one year. One oh. year. Tagal. But now it's pandemic and courts are usually... Closed. closed sometimes it's open depending on the circular of the Supreme yes, Court yes. and depending on the quarantine restrictions so it, it, the fastest is I think two, two years two years yeah two yeah. years and so if you are the person I'm so just, just looking, forget about my utang James. well that's a, <laughs> that's the <a laughs> thing <laughs> we're trying to close some loopholes here is yes, what I'm saying yes, yes. some people they tend to weaponize the law against you right mm -hmm. so if Bernice was that type of person and said Sige, I won't pay because I know I can exploit the system mm -hmm. it'll take you two years mm -hmm. at minimum to get uh, a result mm -hmm. or um, uh, some kind of a decision mm -hmm. that I could even appeal. Mm -hmm. Can they appeal that as well? Yeah, yeah. They, so, they 
Yeah. Is that uh, is that a viable solution yeah. or something we should worry about? People exploiting the law against you. Yes. Yes. So it, it where's happens. what's the what's the suggested remedy for that? You well, can you can go with the faster one, the, the small claims, right? Yeah, we have so, a small claims yeah. that uh, covers uh, a loan which has five hundred thousand. Four hundred or five hundred, depending on. Wow, them. small is relative. So huh? if you want to sue me, <laughs> you can. Right? It's, it's, let's it's say it's 100,000 pesos. You can file for a small claims case with a court. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a lawyer, right? But other knees. Let's just, um, you just fill out the The good thing about that is just, it will take just one hearing. Yes. Oh. You that's, know, that's the shortest mm -hmm. one. I know we're kind of jumping a little bit, but I, I don't want to forget this particular um, point that we had in another show about those mga, uh, apps that lend oh, you money. Oh, the lending apps. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. In, in reverse, um, have you seen those apps that threaten you? Oh, Bernice, we'll tell all your yeah, friends. Yes, and uh, no. I think Robo, RoboCash is one. Yes. Yeah. No, What's the situation with that? Are they allowed to do that? Like, no, no, of course. Mm -hmm. they, of course not. They cannot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Was also, there like a case for that? Or there's no? a law protecting uh, us from that. I yes, mean, yeah. They can't just data harass you when, when their data privacy is one. Mm -hmm. And there's one that's, I think that's fair very credit to use, I think. Because mm -hmm. I always have a standard reply that I keep there in my phone. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, that episode. I'm from the NBI and your case <laughs> has been forwarded. And they ne they always panic because... <laughs> so, just so you know your rights, um, if you are borrowing money um, through one of these apps type of thing or from personal, uh, yes, you don't normally go to jail for it, mm -hmm. but you got to be careful that just like in, in murder and manslaughter, mm -hmm. it's premeditated. If mm -hmm. you are premeditated you're fraudulent in mm. your approach yes. you had no intent to pay then you could be you could serve some jail time mm. but if it was just above board you borrowed money you couldn't pay back the Constitution mm -hmm. protects you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so wow. if it's a civil case it can be like a case for small claims small right? Claims, yeah. um, and then um, it can be if it's more than 400 or 500,000 it's, it's filed with the RPC right for yes. the, uh, money claims mm -hmm. but if it's a criminal case what could be the possible cases for someone who did not pay. For one, if you issued the check, ah. yeah, and it bounced. That's that you're liable for not issuing issue a check. BP twenty two. BP twenty two. The, the ever yeah, famous. Don't ask me why. That's top of mind. Oh yeah. my! <laughs> yeah. So if your check bounced, or if I paid you and then my check bounced. I could be sued for BP-22, right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes there's uh, coercive efforts to get you to to post date checks five years mm. into the future when you, okay. you don't know what your situation is going to be in a year. In what cases like um, let's oh, say rent. rent? Yeah. Yes. Oh. I mean, rent is, an, is a good example of, you know, you have every intention to pay and you're, mm. you're, that's where you live. Mm -hmm. Why would you jeopardize that? But, you know, mm. to plan out two, three years, five mm -hmm. years in the future mm -hmm. and then your situation changes. Now you're held ransom with a check. What mm -hmm. happens in this situation? Does the court, do they take mm -hmm. that into account and say, well, you know, Yes, it is BB-22. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty cleaner and cut dry, but mm -hmm. yeah, there's mm -hmm. not, no malice involved. Is mm -hmm. that a fair way to can, look at it? Can uh, good faith be a defense? Yes, does the course, court recognize good actually, faith? Actually, there's one Supreme Court circular that says if they prefer uh, a fine, imposing a fine, rather mm -hmm. than imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Because they, the court now, is they uh, take into consideration the, the circumstances. circumstances surrounding the issue of the check. Mm -hmm. Then good faith can be used as a defense. In very rare. Yeah, very that rare. was just one case, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, if you're a first-time offender, it could be considered as mm -hmm. a Because the general rule offense. is if it's a special law, mm -hmm. like good faith isn't a defense, right? But mm -hmm. there could be like exceptions to that. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, objections to that circular of the Supreme Court. It's like they mm -hmm. say that it decriminalized oh, BP-22. Because the the circular says said that um, the, it should be preferred mm -hmm. the 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 imposement the imposition of the fine mm -hmm. rather than imprisonment because mm -hmm. it the out of like humanitarian considerations yes because maybe. you could take away somebody who is really productive in the system mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. just so happened that he cannot pay or yes yes, yes. and I'm, I'm glad that the courts recognize that mm -hmm. because there's nuance involved in life mm -hmm. and not Actually. everything's black and white mm -hmm. as you know um, being part of the firm we like to give people a road map of how to do mm -hmm. things. We like to teach people uh, always to the show. So if there's people out there who are listening and they're basically wondering, okay, well, what do I do if mm -hmm. I'm going to lend money to a friend? Mm -hmm. How would you advise? Because siempre me hiya it's like, can you sign this? Oh, what, why do I have to sign? We're friends the month. Yeah. How do you, <laughs> how do you formalize a loan to a friend? Mm -hmm. well, of course, you have it backed up with documents. 
Mm -hmm. And what's enough? Uh, well, an agreement would do. If I think the the advice is I always give is if it's more than a hundred thousand, then there should be a collateral. Oh, okay. it's either a house or mm -hmm. uh, or a but car a or computer. Can a laptop? You can, you yeah, yeah. You can even anything. you can even secure your spouse. The loan. No. <laughs> You can even secure the. I don't want to do that. Oh, down, that's, that's my my wife would just take him, oh. take him. Please. I don't want to do that. I'll even don't pay the pay transfer him. fees. I don't want to do that to my wife, aka BIR. Oh, she's watching. Hi, Marine. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, just to keep it on track, you would like if you're lending money to a friend, if it's over a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. um, make Security sure that, that you have an agreement. Any agreement that you put in writing, it doesn't have to be a. There's no particular template yeah. for this, right? Promissory no. notes could be one. Promissory yeah. notes, just write or that out. Post-dated checks. Sign. Yeah. Get a collateral. Mm -hmm. Get a post-dated check. Anything that sort of secures, it, and mm -hmm. that's a legally binding agreement. Yes, the banks are still using promissory notes. Okay. Yes. Up to now. Yes. Yeah. Because so, that's the very mm -hmm. foundation of the law. Mm -hmm. Then they issue, then they let you sign a mortgage agreement where you, when they secure the loan mm -hmm. with, with your car or a house, your property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So one of, the, one of the most common questions asked to me is, can you file for a case of estafa um, against a person who owes me money? So when does it become an estafa? If there's well, what, what are the elements? The, the the very element of staffa is fraud. Fraud, deception. If, if, yeah, deception. Mm. If you pretend to be someone mm. that has influence, or you have a legit corp, you pretend to be a legit corporation, but you're not. Yes, yes. And the uh, the person lending you money believed you, and then at this yung pala hindi ka mm. hindi ka pala legit. You're uh -oh. not even registered. Yeah, scammer ka pala. Yeah, yeah it really it's, it's yeah, a scam. Yeah. So. In the technical legal um, terminology, it's dolo cosante. Yeah, yeah. If from the very start, the cause of the contract was based on a lie. Parang relationships mm. lang, diba? <laughs> so if it was a lie from the beginning mm. and there was deception, you know, like you lent the money because you were made to believe that your friend was going to pay you back, pero wala pala from the start. It mm. was it was um, deception lang. Yeah. So that could be a staff. Uh, that could be the subject of a criminal case. And yan yung utang na talaga makukulong ka. Yeah. Right, attorney? Not, not because you didn't pay the loan. But because right, there, was but there was that was deception. Employed. What type of terms are we looking at? Five years? Ten years? Six uh, staff, I think it's the minimum six, six, to years. 12, six to twelve years. Wow, mm -hmm. six to twelve years. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But yeah. Wala na yata really? <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, yeah. So um so what can a person do on the flip side if they were sued with a staff? What are the defenses ba? Um payback. Yeah. Pay well, the first thing they should do is Hire a law firm. <laughs> That's right, you can call us. Oh, How about yeah. investments? Because mm. we were in the last episode, we we're talking yeah, about we the talk difference about investments. between investments and loans. Mm. And when you borrow money to do your own business, well, that's a, clear. That's a loan mm. that you need mm. to pay back. Mm -hmm. What about it's an investment? I say invest in my new company, etc., mm. and you don't get the returns that I promised you. Mm. But there's one case about that in 1995 where mm. the Supreme Court said if it's a, in a money market business or transaction, it's not staff, ah. mm -hmm. because the money market is very volatile. I mm. see. So, I see. Um, it's actually a bar question oh. in, in 2020. 2020? Yeah, yeah. So, when did you take the bar again? <laughs> I took the bar in 2005. 2005. <laughs> okay, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always tease him with that, no. but no, he's very young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so a 995 good. question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the, it's a 1995 case, case and it okay. was asked in the bar in 2020. So. Okay. The Supreme Court said, if it's a money market transaction, oh, you, nice. cannot make, you cannot uh, file for staff. Huh? Because mm. even if the even if the even if the corporation or the the person who you invest in mm -hmm. issued a check, mm -hmm. you cannot do that. But of course, yes. for staff, huh? you cannot be prosecuted for staff. Huh? But for bouncing check, bouncing check, there that's you another go, story. Yeah. Because somebody consulted me quite recently mm -hmm. um, that their investments didn't turn out, like parang the. Mm -hmm. the they were in hiding now the corporation so the checks were issued post dated mm -hmm. so i said just go with bp22 because that's that's a sure thing almost. so but if it's yeah. like the money market volatile it's it's different would mm. you like to invest in my shiba inu fund <laughs> I, I just i'm just <laughs> writing Samuel's one out now out, Henry. <laughs> there you go there's a lot of that kasi going on now that's why it's good to talk about it right like i don't know with the pandemic a lot of scammers came out 
you know, like messaging you and making you invest or whatever, and then just running away with your money. Absolutely, so, it's, yeah. it's it's beyond crazy now. Like on social media at the moment, you have um, this even on my own page, right? Mm. There are people pretending to be me in my yeah. own comment section. Yeah. That's how kapal they are now. Oh, like what would they say to you? Um, they're pretending to be James Deacon. They they copy oh my, my picture, gosh. the profile picture. But in lang, I have a blue tick on the on Facebook, yeah. Yeah. but on some other platforms like Twitter, I don't. Yeah. So they can just copy my picture. It looks like me, right. and then they offer, "Oh, um, I have this Bitcoin uh, venture. Oh, send me your Bitcoin. I'll send you back too." Oh God! Like it's the dumbest trick in the book, but it still works apparently yes, because people yes, are desperate yeah. and will never change that about human yeah. nature. That greed will always get yeah. people yeah. and. Right, um, right. So you have to be extra careful right now because there's the lines between the real world and the online world have blurred so completely so. in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. Mm -hmm. yeah. that what about if you, um, if I joined your raffle and I didn't win the raffle? Oh, well, can I sue you? <laughs> you can sue Rocket. I Rocket, mean, cause Rocket I, I wanted yeah. that coffee machine. But anyway. <laughs> so it only goes to show that your show is very fair, right? Like the, well, that's why we distance ourselves from it because you don't want any part of that. It's an automated, right. there's, it's a, there's a randomizer uh -huh. that, that uh -huh. actually picks the, uh, mm -hmm. the winner Mm -hmm. and it's got a verifiable component in the back right. it can be audited yeah so that way oh, that the software will show you that there this yeah. has only been drawn once uh -huh. and it's been completely randomized very, very so there's no way definitely not a scam it can yeah <laughs> because we want to distance ourselves from that very good. and uh, good, yeah. if, if you didn't win and you're not you can sue rocket if that doesn't work <laughs> you can go to the court of a fields you should. not a fields a fields because you feel bad Ooh. So no, you're there. Nice. That's, that's a you, Tito joke right there. That's a Tito <laughs> joke. No, Henry does a lot of Tito jokes. Well, we have so. a minimum quota on the show. <laughs> I, I need to at least lang. hit <laughs> five <laughs> in 30 minutes. And I, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's good to see a different side of Attorney Henry now because to the people who have been, you know, a victim of his eviction. Well, yeah, like it's just a job. It's fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I know, I know. I'm like, just trying to do it. This is to remind you that you're has tried And I mean, it's, yeah, of course, you know, Shempre, I can imagine how hard it is, but if you don't have these 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 restrictions in place, if you don't have these penalties in place, mm -hmm. can you imagine the chaos mm -hmm. and the carnage that would ensue mm -hmm. if there was no way to, I mean, like there was no accountability. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be evicted from their house. Nobody wants to have their, right, you yeah. know, but if there wasn't that, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the alternative is far worse. Yeah. It would just be the wild, wild west, yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell our audience here that, uh, like how does a loan, let's say with a mortgage, mm -hmm. how does it happen when you go to foreclosure? And what happens, let's say, if you don't pay your loan and it has a, it's attached with a mortgage, what happens? When the banks or the financial institution okay. will file a foreclosure case okay. uh, against the, to, to get the property. Let's say a land. Yeah, yeah. If, What's for, the for, Tagalog uh, term for mortgage? Na para sangla. That's sangla. sangla. Uh, sinangla yes. yung then they go to the court for uh, for the auction. In, in Tagalog, that's subasta. Subasta. The, okay. it, it, it's, it's supposed to be public and everybody's uh -huh. allowed to invite it to bid. Okay. It's actually posted in newspapers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of general circulation. Because by law, it has to be published. Yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah. then... Um, after when that. It, after that's award, the, the property is awarded to the highest bidder, who is usually the bank. Oh, okay. Because nobody bids. <laughs> <laughs> nobody bids and nobody cares. Bid. I don't know. Um, it's supposed to be public. Then, then the, the, the court or the sheriff will issue a certificate of sale. And after that, you mm -hmm. register that with the register of deeds. Mm -hmm. After a year, you can transfer it to your name. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get in. After mm -hmm. we transfer it to our name, we're, we went into the foreclosure and stuff. Okay. And then we, uh, when we transferred it to our name, that's when my department comes in. Mm -hmm. I talk to them, we file a case in court, we get the property, mm -hmm. and then you're evicted. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a question um, from a, like a situation, mm -hmm. and I know this person, somebody actually had borrowed like a million mm -hmm. pesos and used their title. This is a private, this was not within a bank or anything, okay. it was yeah. person to person, person. and um, they actually physically gave they their the title, title over. But the property is worth maybe 20, 30 million, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. for a one million debt. To a private person, mm -hmm. is that legally bound? Can that person? What can that other person do with the title? Mm -hmm. Well, first thing, that kind of transaction is not protected. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for, for it, both sides. Or? Yeah, yeah, for the lending side. Okay, because you 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 don't have the you only have an owner's duplicate copy. Mm -hmm. The real copy is the original copy is with the register of deed. So mm -hmm. even if the turn even if you make pun it, you know, the Tagalog, <laughs> I'm into <laughs> Okay. Uh, 
doesn't you the 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 owners will just get a, a new title mm-hmm. they will request for no and right. ah okay because what so should they have done should, you should execute a real estate mortgage and have it registered mm-hmm. with registered. the register that's right okay this is a, this is great so mm-hmm. there is it's beyond just physically holding yes. the title you have to mm-hmm. register that debt mm-hmm. with the register of deeds mm-hmm. the register of deeds yeah. that, okay i'm if, if Bernice borrowing five million off me mm-hmm. for her ten million pass of property mm-hmm. or twenty million pass mm-hmm. of property, I have to register that five million debt with the, the register of deeds. Register of deeds. The so there's, there's now an attachment to that. Yes, mm-hmm. and it binds everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and what does it look like? Is there a physical piece of paper they put on the deed, like when, an annex? When you look at the title, there's a what you call that memorandum and encumbrances. That's mm-hmm. why that if you will see a title, mm-hmm. there's a lot of pages in it. Then some of them are blanks, but there are mortgages there. The, the it it will be re, it will be registered there, and mm-hmm. then it will be considered as a notice to everyone that mm-hmm. uh, this property is being mortgaged. So, mm-hmm. if someone will try to buy the property, then yes, they will see yeah. that okay. mortgage, and that's yes, not a clean yes, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, somebody yeah. has interest yeah. on it. How about this, Attorney Henley? What if the person, the the corporation, let's say a startup corporation or a startup company, is now indebted mm-hmm. and they have mortgage, you know, some assets of mm-hmm. their corporation? Can the shareholders or the founders be liable for the debt incurred or entered into by the corporation? But they're not ultimately liable. Mm-hmm. They, they they'll be the last resort. The last but the resort. Prob- usually the property will be the ones being. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the being for close, the, the, because that's a the, that's a very that's a very uh, you know that's the fastest way of getting your loans repaid. Yes, yeah. So yeah. and and also because there's a separate juridical yes. entity created, right? The corporation is not one and the same with uh, mm-hmm. shareholders. That's why I actually usually advise for them to incorporate, mm-hmm. so that any liability, any investment or like debt you would incur as a company doesn't mm-hmm. redound on you as a person. Hindi yung bahay mo yung if foreclose, but yes. the assets of the corporation. So it's, it's separate and distinct, right? Yeah. It's always like that. Mm-hmm. It's always like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about is it the same thing for an ORCR for a car? And the ORCR is not actually, it's not actually a, a security. You, you just get the car. You get the car. Mm-hmm. So if I held the ORCR of another person for a debt, it's worth nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's really practically it's nothing. Because mm-hmm. that, that's always done, no? Oh, you so just pres- I, you I guess it's just for inconvenience, no? Just uh-huh. it, it just yeah, inconveniences. Just, uh-huh. the just letting the guy know that I have the documents of your car. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, may, yeah. that may preempt him from not paying your. The mm-hmm. debt, but mm-hmm. it'll just make life harder for uh, me yeah. to apply for a new. Uh, yeah, but the law requires you register it with the LTO, the 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 chat the mortgage. The mortgage. Yeah. I yeah. but I haven't seen one being registered. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's different in law and in practice. Yeah, yeah, no? I haven't seen one being, being yeah. registered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of people actually getting drowned mm. in debt. And so from the other side of, you know, like you were the kind of like the lawyer for the corporation, mm. um, like you went after these individuals who owe your company, you know, um, money, right, or property or whatever. Um, what's your advice to those individuals who owe certain big corporations um, a significant amount of debt, let's say? Do you advise them to negotiate with a corporation how do you actually wiggle yourself out of this or how do you solve the problem let's say again hire us first hire us. <laughs> <laughs> the number well, to dial is well, just, yeah first yeah. hire a good law seriously firm. well yeah um I, don't well, serious then, then, uh, that's pretty much serious <gasps> yes <laughs> <laughs> but then um don't hide and don't or hide. don't hide just face it Yes. You can always negotiate for the better rates. Exactly. The or court, loan restructuring. Yeah, loan, right? that's yeah. always available. And also, the courts are, have the power to reduce the mm-hmm. interest rates if mm-hmm. they see that it's exorbitant. Mm-hmm. They, uh, well, in my pa- in my experience, the, the courts all doesn't like being a collection agent for that. Oh, I see. I see. When I was the one collecting, they always say, the, the judge would always say, ginagawa niyo kami collection agent. <laughs> Puntahan nyo na lang. Oh, oh, Ginag- Tumatampak yung kaso rito. Yeah. They don't really like that. Yeah. yeah. So don't be delinquent, right? Like you face the case because if you're just gonna hide from it and the case will proceed without you. I so, mean, okay, that was that answers gonna, my next question. Mm-hmm. So this it's not as easy as somebody fleeing the country, especially if it's a foreigner or something like that. Yeah. Um, the case can proceed without you? Of course. You'll be, so, oh. you'll be declared in default. Mm-hmm. And if, you're, if you have assets here, you, they, they could go after that. Even aspect. if you're not here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. If, if for any reason, um, yeah, you, you take off and then you just say, well, they, they can't touch mm-hmm. me because of 
they can still garnish, let's say you have a property or something, sheriff can come in, with, whether you are signed, whether you're there or not, after pre-prescribed period, they can just take control yeah, of your property. If, if, actually, if, you, even if you're abroad, the, the summons can be served to you. Yeah, yeah, because it's different with a criminal case, with the jurisdiction that you have right. to, you know, go to court and be arraigned before the court has jurisdiction over you with civil cases, it's different. So you can't run away, or try not to run away mm. with your um, because it's also Running away is also considered as fraud. What if you die? <laughs> uh, that's a oh, bit, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Where I mean, will like, the debt um, yeah. go down to? You know, that's a good question. Banks nowadays, they admit if you uh, file for a loan, mm -hmm. they make you sign, you know, like insurance part. Okay. That's what they oh. call the mortgage redemption insurance. Oh, okay. That's one thing I'm giving that. to the viewers right now. Okay. okay. This is actually a it's tip. It's a tip. Okay. Nobody, does it really, nobody really knows this. I don't know why they don't enforce this okay they usually make they make you sign a mortgage redemption insurance application okay that's when the lender dies the insurance company will pay from the the loan the from the insurance the company the, the, the lender oh, and then your, your debt okay. because the contract between the life insurance it's a life insurance okay because the if if the if the borrower dies okay. then the insurance company will automatically pay the balance then oh, your debt okay. is paid. Yeah. And is that mandatory or? Uh, it's not mandatory, but that's part of the security. It's a good strategy for lenders. So okay, that's with mm. the bank. If mm. um, if, in other debts, do you does the debt die with the person or yes. does it? Then, yes. So you can go up to the wife and. No, you get the problem. The estate. The property. You, yes. you ah, file. Okay. So uh, you can still file. Yeah, against because they the will say eventually settle the estate, and one of mm. the claims of the estate is debt. One of the creditors. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You have the, This goes for credit card debt. This yeah. goes for. But not to the person of the heirs. Like yes. The, the son. Because the, the loan is personal. Okay. Mm. So, but but from the estate, and then hati kayo after mm. that. There, there, we have this uh, pre preference of credits. So debt. Taxes and debt. Yeah, yeah. you really can't escape. It's permanent. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Those yeah. are the certain things in life. Yeah. Wow. Debt and taxes. It's certain. <laughs> well, there you go. And uh, the only other certain thing in life is that we need to eat. So thankfully, we have our sponsor for the show. Oh yes, we Mama Luz. Do. Was that Thank a smooth you so segue or not? Thank you so much, Mama Luz. Um, Everything they do pretty much is culinary genius. So thank you so much for the support and the delicious lunch every episode. So thank you also to our partners, Home Lab. Um, their app is now available in a iOS and Google Play. So and don't forget South much. Bank Cafe. South Bank, thank you. Thank you for your Spanish latte, my favorite. Um, Muy bueno. I love it. I love it. <laughs> na, sobrang sarap talaga. It's my favorite. Like I go to South Bank every time. And Mama Luz, thank you, David thank Ciso you, and Crystal Season and Chef Carlos. So that's pretty much all we have time for for this episode. We hope you learned a lot. We learned a few things here attorney from Attorney Henry, Henry the especially house. about the, what do you call it? The mortgage, mortgage loan, loan, loan redemption, oh, yeah, insurance, yeah. insurance thingy mababi. And if you want a little <laughs> bit more, <laughs> if you want a little bit more detailed answers for that, or you have any other questions, Pop them down below. We actually do read them, uh, but we only read them if you smash the like button. If you don't smash the like button, we ignore it, and then we <laughs> talk among ourselves about you while you're not present, and that's not very fun. Mm. So smash the like button, leave your comment, then we can go and treat you like one of us here. <laughs> We don't Gets treat people us. who don't like the hit the like button. There you go. No. Anyway, you can also subscribe to the channel. It's a great way of getting uh, informed when we go out with our podcasts. And you always learn something new. Mm. So with that, we'll leave it there because next episode we have a jam-packed one as well. I'm James Deacon. And I'm attorney Bernice Pinol. And this show is brought to you by the law firm of Pinol, Santos, and Associates. And of course, the Aklan Group of Companies. See you in seven days. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.